It's so crazy that yesterday I was at the beach and it looked like this. And now it looks like this. <laughs> the next day it snowed so much. Oh my goodness. It was 50 degrees in Massachusetts yesterday. And now it's 30 and snowing like nonstop. So I don't know what is happening. Wow. Um, okay, you guys, if you like my video, like, like my video, if you like my channel, like, subscribe and hit the notification button. I'm giving myself a, a skin treatment. So I kind of look a little, uh, probably, uh, you know, weird with this like 1960s thing going on. Although I have to say, I loved this fashion in, um, when I lived in New York and I was in the eighties, the whole, um, B52 movement was happening and everybody was wearing these types of things in their hair with like the sixties, like turtleneck with the cutoff sleeves. And it was one of my favorite times in, um, the history of fashion. I'm just saying in my, my life. I miss it so much. Oh, I just way. did uh, watched House of Gucci with uh, Lady Gaga in it, and it was a great movie, but they left out so much information about the story, and I kind of want to do a video about it. So if you want me to do a video about like all the, what happens to the daughters um, and some of the other information not included in the movie, I'd love to do that video. Um, so let me know. Comment below. Um, okay, let's get into it. So I did cover on the live uh, with Adam and Jason, that's up and Adam and down with Jason, that I did with them on Real Housewives of New Jersey last week, Kelly Dodd gossip that she had dropped, but I wanted to put it in its own video so we don't lose it because, you know, those lives can be really long and there's always really good gossip in them, but they can get the gossip can get lost or buried in the conversation. So I decided to do a specific video for this. So Kelly was on Behind the Velvet Rope with David Yontif, and David, of course, sends me the juicier episodes that he does. He alerts me and says, this is a really good one. You'll want to listen to this. Okay. And I really appreciate it because I can't listen to all of them. And so David... Um, by the way, he should be coming to Massachusetts in the next like week or two on a little trip. So I'm hoping to see him. Um, he said that Kelly Dodd uh, spilled on his show that uh, she was charged by Bravo $16,000 for bad behavior. Now, she secretly thinks this was related to wearing the hat that a lot of people felt that she was... Um, kind of making fun of, I guess, the BLM movement. But uh, she said, no, this was an inside joke with me and my friends um, for my wedding shower. And it had nothing to do with that. It was taken out of context. And so now, I'm yeah. more interested in the fact that they charged her $16,000 because they didn't do this type of fining when I was on the show. We didn't have fines uh, if we went off, a, 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 you know, something on a did something. So I, it, what this made me believe, which was really interesting, and this is what I wanted to point out in this video, is that there is a Bravo narrative that these reality stars have to follow in their uh, ways they're depicting themselves off the show. So that's really uh, strange to me. I was like, a Bravo narrative off the show? And, and in fact, she does bring it up. Now I'm going to play you my favorite part of this interview. Okay, here we go. Do you think, because you know, like there's all these, like why do you think the call came to you that it was over for you? Like, do you think it was because of saying to Andy he was on the wrong side of politics? Or do you think it was, like, why do you think it came, or do you think it has to do with Heather? I already know, I know 100% why I got fired. Why? Because why? of politics, 100%. 100%. And they didn't like how I caused them grief like they were promoting heavily blm and i wore that drunk wives matter hat they said i was um uh i was i was uh i was mocking them i wasn't fucking mocking them it, i mean it's so bizarre to me that they can twist and turn things i wasn't mocking them i was given to me i didn't buy the hat i didn't sport the hat i thought it was funny because it was a play on words i'm a housewife we get drunk <laughs> Drunk wives matter. It wasn't has and anything to do with that. Upfront about 
It, it just makes me so that mad. You, you said things that upset the network. Oh, and then, you know, I traveled everywhere. They didn't like that I traveled because I went to go back to see him. I got stuck there. We were going out and we went to Florida. We went to Florida. Very intrusive. It wasn't this intrusive like when I was on the show. They didn't like, they didn't like that I was... Your tone. Of my tone. They yeah. didn't like it. and Not many it, people it, like your tone. a lot of people were outraged. And it was funny because I was just talking to one of my... Um, one of my girls that work at Bravo and she uh, hung out with her at Shan's house the other day. And she was like, so funny how it, there was a, a whole ban of people saying, we're going to ban the show. We're going to ban the show. And she goes, and we had high ratings. We had higher ratings than anybody. And it was in a cold, it was at the time where news was taking over and they were writing about it. Yeah. She, you know, she was like, so, you know, but I do know people that I just want to like, point out that, my ear is a little bit trained for a podcast because I do one, Dishing Drama Dana. Um, and I heard a few edits in there. I wonder if David was listening through it and thought maybe he should take some stuff out. I mean, he has to still play nice in the sandbox with Bravo. Um, I think, you know, Kelly uh, is also kind of spilling some tea there that she had lunch or a hangout session with someone from Bravo at Shannon's house recently you know, and they were talking about this, you know, in a, like a private setting. And like, she was, the Bravo person was saying, these were the best ratings we ever had. You shouldn't have been let go over it. Huh? I wonder if that's the Bravo narrative or I wonder what the Bravo narrative is. Let's check it out. Let's see if we okay, can so figure now it out. Listen to this Bravo narrative comment she makes. Like those are the ones who have the money who who watch you know talking about advertisers should be paying attention i don't know what uh, you know demographic i'm just getting off on a tangent because it makes me so upset because i was i didn't go towards their narrative and i knew it by the way because Narrat. once you go and you tell people what your okay now she comments on jen shaw hold on and it's 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 not even that they're, 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 they're outraged that they're keeping, uh, you know, this Jen Shaw, they keep people like Erica, Erica um, you know, Shade. people like at DUI, guys like Gina, um, Teresa Judice, who, you know, to, maybe it wasn't her that did it, it was her husband, because I know her, she's, but, you know, people that have been involved in the law that have committed real crimes. Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh-huh. Allegedly. Yeah. They, they, they can be on there but somebody who has an opinion and who doesn't fit their narrative and and by the way i'm not a trumper you know we don't want i i don't need to get into politics here that's not the goal of this video the video goal here is to look at this bravo narrative that's really wild and also get to the bottom of why she was really fired because I feel like that's a mystery that still needs to be settled. We all have our own ideas why that happened with Kelly Dodd, but I, I really want to hear her perspective. So I had to, you know, I skipped a bunch of stuff. Now this is the more juicy stuff. Hold on, ready? <laughs> yeah, he did. He never wanted. Okay, wait, this is like, yeah. Well, you can, that's another thing you could do on your podcast. Do you think any, do you think Heather had something to do with your going though? Like, do you think it was like all the Tamara, Tamara, Tamara told me 100%. Tamara told me, and Tamara's friends with everybody. So Tamara said that she had 100% had something to do with it. That basically, if they, they came to her and asked her to be on the show, and what is, sounds like it's very likely is she said only if Kelly's not on. And they decided they would rather have her than Kelly because Kelly's caused What are they so going to do? Problems. What are they going to do with, with Gina? I know Gina's a cool person, and Emily. I mean, they're not there to sustain the. And then they hire Nicole James. And she quits in the middle of the, 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 you know, she just didn't show up. She just didn't go because she didn't. I just think it's so interesting that she got this, you know, Heather's got this power, especially given that the ratings I've recently seen for the current new season of Real Housewives of Orange County with Noella is absolutely lower than it was even last year. So what does that tell you? I mean, I think you got to go back to the OGs. Or you got to dump the show for a few years at this point. Now, let me play you this part. This is about how Heather uh, supposedly got Nicole fired, too. Like, that Jennifer Armstrong is boringer than 
do- a doornail, okay? And then you she's have She's supposed to be really nice, it's probably why she's boring, yeah. Show. Because she has a lot going on. Um, I think she's a great hire. Noella. One. She's, she's beautiful. Too. Oh, yeah. She's got a lot going on in her life. But I think that was a good one. Heather, you'll see what's going to happen. But, but the question was, is she lead to you not coming back and we think there's a strong oh, well, strong even, likelihood. even yeah even uh tamara said 100 percent. that's what went down yeah were you shocked then like to your point that like they kept like gina and emily well yeah i mean because they are like so like there's there's no there's i mean i like them as she a like person. doesn't want to diss them but she's like they're Not really boring like discounting them as people they're freaking awesome i like them i don't know but i'm not a big fan of they're theirs. not tv entertainment <laughs> they, they don't move the needle we don't think like kelly does. i mean we so used then to- david says there's this whole thing rumor going around about nicole james that she didn't just quit okay and I, there is some really good rumors about this which i'm going to do in a different video um because it's its own thing but let me play this for i just like to finish the subject matter on kelly James that she didn't just quit like that. And I'm not saying this, this is just what's out there that, you know, Heather, she said stuff about Terry's surgical abilities. And that was part of the reason why she's phased out and demoted. Like, do you think there's any truth to that? Like, I do. Like, you do? Well, yes, yeah, she got phased out. She didn't get demoted and she didn't quit. She got phased out because there was a law. There was, she sued Terry Dubrow for doing a botch job. And not only is, did it happen from her, if you read his Yelp reviews and you hear, <laughs> if you live here in Orange County, I have he all this on the paper. does not have the best reputation at all. It's shocking that that botch show is still going. You, I'm just saying, just purely reading Yelp and having, like, no one goes to him here. It's all people I've from I've heard this from other people, by the way. Get, I've seen the Yelp reviews sure. and because I posted famous. them, but. Yeah, but. He, I've heard he, that no one goes to him. I've heard that. It's a rumor. This thing that you think that's part of why Nicole is I, kind of gone. I, I think that's why Nicole is gone. One hundred percent. She got phased out because of the lawsuit. How did they not know that she had filed a lawsuit years ago? Like, didn't they do their research? And they, not, their... they don't all do their research. Not, hmm. not all of them. They, they, yeah. I mean. I mean, did they do their research when Jen Shaw was, you know, committing? I mean, Good point. Do you think like a Jen Shaw and an Erica, to your point before, should be gone? Um, sh- no, I don't think they should be gone. I mean, I think it's good TV. I guess in Heather's opinion, she believes that uh, Nicole was phased out because she actually uh, attacked Heather Dubrow on the show Where It Hurts, which is, of course, Terry's business. So I don't totally agree with Kelly on this because I know for a fact that some of the Bravo producers reach out to women that know the housewives and women that are on the show that leave and ask them to tell them insider information or gossip on the other housewives to use against them on the show so the producers know stuff that could be brought up on the show to hurt the housewives. Now, they'll never admit it, but I know it's true. And so I think they probably uh, found out from a friend of Nicole's that this had happened And unbeknownst to her, made it a storyline. To get Heather going, because they thought that would be the really cool thing to do. Now, I know that seems odd, given that Terry Dubrow is an E! show and all that, and they'd want to protect that. But, you know, there's a lot of uh, cooks in the kitchen at at Bravo and Evolution and E! and NBC and, you know, producers on the ground and the girls. And there's a lot of agendas in there. Um, Now, it also could be that she mentioned it in her casting cape. Uh, tape like to you know get casted Nicole said oh funny enough I've had a you know I I sued Terry and you know and they ask a few questions they leave it alone but that means hey sweetheart it's up for dibs to use on the show but I'll tell you right now if the producers did not want that to come out it would have been edited out and they wanted it in so bad that they actually show Heather like pushing a cameraman (laughs) You know, which is like breaking the the fourth wall to have it in the edit. That's how bad they now, wanted I want to remind you that I was in scenes that they cut my whole thing out. 
okay, to make it appear like I'm not even there. So like, it's intentional. Don't think that there was like no way for them to cut that out at uh, that part or no. They intentionally left the attack on Terry in there and then they fixed it really quickly in a bow. And I think they did that because I believe Heather quit the show. So I think she quit the show over it. That was like a line she was like, you're not crossing that line with Terry. And I don't think she thought they would go there because Terry's on an E show. But we don't know the life cycle of things. Like maybe E's thinking of getting rid of the show. You know, I don't know. I, I have no idea. That's not gossip or, you know, it's just like speculation totally. I love Botched, by the way. I think it's a great show. I love Adrian Malouf's sex husband. He's so sweet. Anyway, uh, that's it. So oh, I, I want to say it could be that the producers secretly really don't like Heather Dubrow that much. I mean, I don't know. Heather is obviously very accomplished uh, professionally. But like, you know, Jeff Lewis, who's one of Andy's good friends, really was public about his absolute hatred for her because she blew him off at a party or an event they were at and was like, I guess, snubbed him. And she said she didn't even remember him. And she didn't know she snubbed him and she regretted it. But he really took it to heart. So, I mean, maybe he was being oversensitive or maybe he sensed something uh, about the way she is um, from the way she behaved at this party and treated him. Um, so I don't know which it is in that situation, but he's been public about disliking her. So maybe Andy secretly is giving in to, you know, uh, kind of coming for Heather or maybe he doesn't believe she's going to last long term so he wants to get the best TV possible out of her you guys I hope you enjoyed this video love to hear your thoughts as always please comment below um please spread the word about the channel too I'd like to get over 10,000 because once I do I get to add all these things um I've been instructed that I shouldn't add until I'm over 10,000 people and I have all these really fun things I want to add to the channel but I can't do it until I hit that number so uh, do your best to tell people about it if they may uh, not know and maybe they'd be interested, maybe post it and read it or talk about it in places that um, like TikTok or something. I don't know. I'm not on there. So I sneak into Reddit every once in a while. You probably see me sleuth in. <laughs> then I sleuth out. 